All right, at the end of the last video, I just got cut short while I was vectorizing this line art. And vectorizing means to change it from pixels into clean vector shapes, right? And it's always a good idea with line art if you have the ability to do it with the vector program. So let me start that over. And we're using not an online version, which is linked in the assignment, like vectorizer.com, which does the same thing, or vectorizer.ai. But because we've already paid for, so that's what it looked like originally, because we've already paid for uh, Illustrator, we're going to use that to trace it, right? To take it from the pixels into clean vector shapes. So, what do I need? I need my PNG, or you can also do this with a JPEG, of my line art. Now, this line art was done by drawing a sketch and then tracing over the sketch with tracing paper and a Sharpie pen and then scanning that at 600 pixels per inch and then cleaning that up in Photoshop so it looked really dark like that. And now when I bring that, I'm just going to open it, right click, open with Adobe Illustrator. The other way I can do that is I can just drag it to the, the program icon in the dock. Then I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger by holding down Option and Shift. That's just how Illustrator works. So that it fits nicely and visibly on what's called the artboard, which is this white rectangle. Okay, then... I click on it with this black, what's called the large selection tool, right? And I click on properties and scroll down to where it says image trace. And then I choose black and white logo. And you'll see that it cleans up my line art. But it also fills it in the background with white. So I need to go to the advanced options. Go to this drop down menu that says advanced and then click on ignore color. And when I do that, the white shapes will go away. You'll see that here. All right, now I can zoom in and I can see if I like this. This vector and I do, it's pretty clean. It's got little blips in it a few places, just like the vectorizer AI one did. I don't like how bumpy those wings are and I could play with these settings a little bit like I could say give me fewer paths that will make it a little bit smoother but I'll lose some detail right. and then when I'm happy with it I hit expand and that's what turns it into a vector it's only a preview until you hit expand and then as a vector even though this is Illustrator we haven't played that much with Illustrator you can make little changes. My favorite is to use the pencil tool and then to just redraw the lines by starting and stopping on the edge. So like my, because I smoothed it too much, my little hash mark here got less defined. So I might draw those clean distinctions in. as long as I start on the path and end on the path. Okay, so that's one option. And then I could save this in our three vector formats. Save as to our computer as an AI file. That's just an Adobe Illustrator working file. File, save a copy, save it as an SVG. That's what works well with Photopea. And then lastly, file, save a copy, and save as an EPS. That's what works best within Adobe products like Photoshop. Those are our vector formats. You can check my folder, make sure I've got them. The EPS, the SVG, and where's the AI? The AI. Okay, next. Let's close this one and let's try opening my other version that wasn't done traditionally but was done digitally inked. It's this one. It's got a lot more detail to it. And then I'm going to open that up in Adobe Illustrator. 
and we're going to go through this vectorizing process again. It's called image tracing. So I use the black selection tool, hold down Option and Shift to fit it on the artboard. This isn't about resolution, this is just about seeing it clearly. And you actually don't need to hit return, I just always make that mistake. Then I go to Properties, I click on it, I go to Properties and click on Image Trace, choose Black and White Logo. You're going to see that it fills in with white space, but it's now a vector, no longer pixel based. And then I got to go to the advanced options. You always have to because you don't want that white as part of your vector. And you say ignore color, so it's just black line art alone. See, just black line art alone. And then I hit expand and I can hit it there or I can hit it here. And once it's expanded, I can use the small selection tool and then see all these anchor points. And this came in with a lot more fidelity because it was done in a digital program instead of scanned, right? And then I can use my favorite tool, the pencil tool. And if I wanted to redraw a little bit of it like this, I can do that without much difficulty. This looks pretty good. I don't see any glaring shapes I don't like or edges. Yeah. So next, oh, maybe I'll even this out a little bit. So in order to use the pencil tool, you have to see the anchor points. So I use the small selection tool, the little white arrow to click on it first, and the shortcut for that is going to command. And then once you see that, then you can redraw as long as you start on the path and end on the path. That's why it's my favorite tool in Illustrator. Helps with logos too. All right. So now I have to save it. So file. Save as, always to your computer, into assignment five. As an AI file with all the defaults. Then file, save a copy as an SVG file. That's what's going to work with PhotoP, which is the next step. All the defaults. And then file, save a copy out of Illustrator as an EPS. And then we are done with the paid program and we're back to freeware. You can close Illustrator. And we just want to find those files. And I'm going to mark these purple. So we can compare them. Let's see, it's the raster one. That's the SVG, and then where's the AI? The AI is here. Now I can't put vector files onto Canvas, just like for your logo. So what do I need to do? I need to go to PhotoP. Right? I can close these, don't need these anymore. I can go to PhotoP and open a new file. And now this file is going to be the file where I add my color next class. So I start a new project, and this is going to be big enough for a poster. So it's going to be bigger than 8 by 10. So I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5 Full Color Spot Illustration. Large. And then in inches, I'm going to make it 11 inches tall by 14 inches wide. 11 by 14 is the art standard above 8 by 10. And then in pixels per inch, it's going to be 350. 50 above the standard minimum print.
And then we create it and then check that image size because you know how, yep, it messed me up. You know how photo P is, it will slip on you. So I'm going to make the width 14 and the height 11 at 350. So it's big. It's going to be 4,900 by 3,850 pixels. Now, this is the important thing when you're using vectors, right? I drag and drop the SVG into photo P. I place it where I want it. It seems like it's placed pretty well and hit return. And now it's no longer a vector, but it's at this high resolution. And it is a vector file as a smart object in the layer. And I want to keep it there, so I'm going to lock it. Then I'm going to turn off the background and save it as a PNG. And I'm going to call this my final line art. Because this was made, cleaned up through being a vector. And that's what I put to canvas for the second requirement. So now I go to the assignment. Go to my post, edit it. And I'm going to put my second requirement, which is the clean vector line art. Clean black vector line art. Um, put onto canvas as a PNG with no background showing. There's no reason to save it as a PNG if you have the background turned on. And I'm doing it 11, uh, 14 inches by 11 inches at 350 pixels per inch. And I'd recommend that for you as well, so that when we digitally color it, it's a nice high resolution. And then that's going to be in my downloads folder out of Photo P. And then I can move it, once it's in, into my folder and mark it orange. So there we go. I have the first two requirements. All that's left is adding color, which we'll do in Photo P next class. And if you want to start thinking about that, scroll up to where it says an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring, right underneath my little cheat sheet, and start thinking about what kind of color you want to be inspired by. Is it Pokemon? Is it comics? Is it poster art? Is it animation? Maybe it's Fraggle Rock. Or Ashley in presentations mentioned non-player. And that's a project I, uh, I collect from Nate Simpson. And his process is really incredible. This is some more Nate Simpson work. Just really well-chosen colors under clean line art. All right. And that will do it for this video. And our goal today is to get our sketch posted and then to, to work on getting clean line art before the beginning of next class. So next class, we can just work on coloring.